Prologue Thanksgiving, 1954, Washington, D.C. If these walls could talk, well, they may not be talking, but they are certainly listening and watching. Briarwood House is as old as the century. The house has presided, brick-fronted, four-storied, slightly dilapidated, over the square below for 54 years. It's seen three wars, ten presidents, and countless tenants. But until tonight, never a murder. Now its walls smell of turkey, pumpkin pie, and blood. And the house is shocked down to its foundations. Also, just a little bit thrilled. This is the most excitement Briarwood House has had in decades. Murder. Murder here in the heart of sleepy white picket fence Washington, D.C. And on Thanksgiving, too. Not that the house is terribly surprised by that. It's held enough holidays to know that when you throw all that family together and mix with too much rum punch and buried resentment, blood is bound to be shed sometimes. But the scene that erupted tonight and splashed gore from the threshold to the attic, goodness, but it's a doozy. There's a corpse on the floor of the second attic apartment, spilling a lake of blood from a throat cut nearly to the bone. In the front hall below, there's a detective scribbling in his notepad. In the kitchen, 17 people are milling around in varying stages of shock, old and young, male and female, some crying, some silent. And almost all of them, the house knows, having watched the whole thing explode from shocking beginning to even more shocking end, are nursing reasons to fear that they will end the night in handcuffs. The police detective comes into the kitchen to talk with Briarwood House's owner and landlady, but she's busy having hysterics. The house flutters its curtains, rattles a door or two, takes another peek into the murder scene on the top floor. The green walls of that particular apartment are painted over with a vast, intricate flowered vine. But you'd be hard pressed to tell what kind of flower is under the blood splatter. This was a very enthusiastic murder, the house muses. Not one moment's hesitation from the hand swinging that blade. We have not yet identified the deceased, Mrs. Nilsson, the detective is saying to the landlady when the house's attention flits back to the kitchen. No identification was found on the body. Well, I hope you don't expect me to look at it, my nerves being what they are. She pushes away the glass of water being urged on her by her lanky teenage son. We have preliminary reports that the death occurred between six and seven in the evening. I understand you weren't at home at the time, Mrs. Nilsson. I was out at my bridge club. I'm always out at my bridge club on Thursday nights. Even on Thanksgiving? The detective sounds dubious. If you'd seen as many holidays turn nasty as I have, the house wants to tell him. You'd be surprised everyone isn't ducking them. Shocking waste, Thanksgiving. I provide a turkey lunch from my boarders, but that isn't enough for some people. Mrs. Nilsson sniffs, eyeing her son, who still hovers with the water glass. This one won't lift a finger for his mother in the kitchen, but the moment that woman says she's making a whole turkey in my straddle oven. Briarwood House doesn't like Mrs. Nilsson, hasn't liked her since she first crossed the threshold as a bride, complaining before she'd even shaken the rice out of her hair that the halls were too narrow. My halls, too narrow. And still doesn't like her 20 years down the road. No one else in this kitchen does either, the house knows perfectly well. People aren't that hard to read. The body was found in the fourth floor apartment, the one with green walls. The detective is looking down at his notes, so he misses his first clue. The tense glances that pass shadow fast among the other 16 witnesses. Or would suspects be a better word? The house wonders. Because it knows something the detective doesn't. The killer is still very much in this room. Can you tell us who rents that top floor apartment, Mrs. Nilsson? The detective persists, oblivious. The landlady gives another sniff and the house settles in happily to listen. Mrs. Grace March. Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to get this audiobook for free in just a few minutes.
In this video, I'll guide you step by step. It's really simple and fast. In just a few minutes, you'll be able to listen to your audiobook for free. So let's get started. Here are the steps you need to follow. Click on the link below the video to access the audiobook page. I want to emphasize that the method I'm showing you works with any book from the Amazon audiobook catalog offered by Audible. Make sure the option Free with Trial is displayed on the page. Then, click on the Try Audible button. You will be redirected to the Amazon website. If you already have an Amazon account, log in. Otherwise, you can easily create an account. Now, if you don't have an Amazon account, here's how to create one. Click on the Create Your Amazon Account button at the bottom of the page. Fill in the fields of the form with your first name, last name, mobile phone number or email address, and password. Then click Continue to validate. You will receive a verification code at the email address you provided. Log in to that email account, copy the verification code, and paste it into the box requested by Amazon. Next. Enter your phone number to receive a verification code via SMS. Insert this code into the box presented by Amazon and click the Create Your Amazon Account button. On the next page, Amazon will ask you to enter your credit card number. Don't worry, it won't be charged because it's the free trial period. If you decide to continue your subscription, you will be charged $14.95 per month after the free trial period. Click on Add Your Card. After adding your credit card, you will be redirected to this page asking for your personal information, such as first name, address, email, etc. Then click the Use This Address button. Once you have entered all the information requested by Amazon, you will finally arrive at this page. You will see that the book you have chosen is displayed, and all you have to do now is confirm it to listen to your audiobook. As you can see, the amount to be paid is $0. This first audiobook is completely free. Now click on the Try for Free button. Now your Audible account is created and you have access to your free audiobook. You can listen to the audiobook you chose directly on this Amazon page or on the Audible website. The most recent had been two years previously. I'd actually survived six months. I want to remind you once again that the method I've shown you here works with any book from the Amazon catalog audiobooks offered by Audible. Now, all you need to do is go to the Audible website, use your Amazon information to log into your Audible account, email address and password, and once you're logged in, click on the library menu. There you will find your free book, and all you have to do is click listen now to start listening. I'm not ashamed to admit that I cried like a baby. You also have the option to download the Audible app which will make it easier and faster to listen to the audiobooks in your library. From this point on, you have two choices. The first choice is to keep your Audible subscription and agree to be charged $14.95 per month. This will give you a monthly credit that you can use to listen to or download any audiobook of your choice, regardless of its price. If you want to enjoy one audiobook per month regardless of its price, simply make use of your subscription. The second choice is to cancel your Audible account before the end of the 30-day period. This way, you won't be charged $14.95, and you can keep access to your free audiobook indefinitely. To cancel your account, go to your Audible account, hover over the menu where your first name is displayed, and click on the Account Details link. On the page that appears, click on the Cancel Membership link. Scroll down the page, then click on Continue to Cancel on the next page. Audible will ask you for the reason for your departure. You can provide the reason of your choice, and then at the bottom of the page, click the Continue Canceling button. In this step, Audible will make a final attempt to keep you as a customer by offering you several deals that are truly interesting for audiobook enthusiasts. You can choose one of these offers if you wish to continue the adventure with Audible. Otherwise, click on Confirm Cancellation. There you go. Your Audible subscription is cancelled, and you still have your free audiobook in your library without paying anything. Your credit card has not been charged. 
Take a look. Together, we will verify if the offered book is still available after canceling the subscription. To do this, click on the Library menu. I confirm that the book is still here, available in your account. You can listen to it whenever you want by clicking the Listen Now button and listen to it as many times as you wish. I was crying because I knew that I was condemned to be a smoker for life. Now, if you want to enjoy a free book and listen to it at any time, click on the link below this video and follow the steps I just described. Thanks to this, you can listen to your book for free anytime and as many times as you want in your Audible account.